and welcome to the seventh insight in this Baselight beginner video series. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at the Shots View tool. It's got a broad range of applications uh, from project management to shot navigation, all the way through to filtering your shots, exporting out EDLs, PDFs. Uh, you can even select missing media using the Shots view. So it's a really powerful application once you really dig in and understand how it works. In this insight, we're using the same scene detect scene as we did in the previous insight. But what I've done is I've incorrectly tagged some color spaces, I've made some transform adjustments, and I've introduced some missing media. So we can see what a typical project might look like um, and how the Shots view can be used to iron out a lot of these inconsistencies. To start off with, let's go up to our views menu and go to the shots view down the bottom. So you can see we have a sequential list of our shots starting from uh, the first shot on the timeline all the way down. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this drop down menu here and we're just going to untick the metadata that we don't want. So I'm going to untick take, scene, uh, camera, clip, tape, and I don't particularly need to see the length, although it can be a useful metadata column, so I'm gonna turn that off too. I'm gonna to leave the record and source timecode and the strip name, but I might go ahead and add the input format and the input color space. Uh, two things I find really useful uh, when I'm doing this sort of analysis of the entire project. Okay, so we've tidied up the list view of the shots, but if we wanted an even more visual representation of the shots in our film, we can go ahead and click the grid view. This gives a great visual summary of all of the clips that we have within our scene, and we can actually make this larger if we hit down the command middle mouse button and hit drag to the right. We can make these bigger. Dragging to the left with command and middle mouse button held down, you can see that we can adjust the size here. But for the things that we are exploring in this video, we're gonna stick to the list view. So as we scroll down here, you can see a few things. Um, on the top right, in the input color space column, you can see that we've got some mixed color spaces. Now this is ringing alarm bells for me on this project because we're using a scene detect file that has a consistent color space. So all of the shots within the scene detect file should be the same. So already I can start to analyze my scene from this view and go, okay, I might need to change these uh, further down the line. Uh, also, we can see that we have a missing media clip here. If we go ahead and click this, it jumps us to the shot within the timeline. So if I relocate the shots view over here, make this a bit smaller, you can see that this shot is actually offline. So we need to have a look at why that is. You can also see if you squint really hard, you can see that we have some strip categories attached to these shots. Again, if I click this and zoom in on the timeline here, you can see that we have a default strip category applied to these clips. So you can also see this in the shots view. So again, lots of information that you can gauge uh, from the shots view at a quick glance. So as you'll have noticed, you can navigate to any clip within your timeline by just left clicking any of these clips. And you can see that the cursor jumps in the timeline to that time code. If I actually wanted to select these clips, I would hold the command button down and I would left click any clips that I wanted. You can see that they have a red border uh, after I've selected the clips. And if I make this a bit smaller again, you can see that this has actually selected these shots in the cut view, not on my timeline. If I scroll out on my timeline, none of these clips have been selected. I'm gonna go back up here and hit the right mouse button, deselect all. And I'm gonna go up to my customize dropdown and change it from select cuts view to select stack top strips. Now you can see if I hold down command button and left click again, you can see that now it's actually selecting the clips on my timeline. So now these are subject to hotkeys and I can move them around. Um, for example, if I wanted to move these strips up, I could hit alt up arrow and you can see I'm selecting these. And if I wanted to move them down, Alt, down arrow. When I select strips uh, using the shots view, I like to be able to move them around and shift them about in the timeline. So you can toggle between the stack top and the cuts view uh, using this customized menu here. For now, I'm just gonna deselect all. And let's have a quick look at this color space. So you can see that for the majority of these clips, uh, the color space is from metadata. So if we just go ahead and click one of these and drag the shots view away, the metadata tagging is Rec 709. So Baselight has identified that the QuickTime is Rec 709, and that's correct. Baselight has done that correctly. All of these clips come from the same file, so we need to make sure that all of these clips are changed to this default Rec 709 tagging. If I go ahead to one of these clips, which is tag log C, for example, you can see that it looks very crunchy. The highlights are blown out. Uh, it looks very overly saturated. Uh, this is the wrong color space for this clip. So the way we fix that is we'll go ahead and command click this clip and I'll shift click to group select. What I can do is I can hit command G. 
Now, Command G is a very, very useful shortcut. We'll come back to this one a lot uh, throughout this series, but Command G enables and disables group grading mode. Group grading mode is very dangerous, but very powerful. Um, basically, any change that you make, for example, to input color space or input format or name will ripple through to all of the clips that are affected by the group grade, which in this case are these five clips here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this first input color space and change this back to from metadata rec 709. And you can see with one click, all of the selected clips have changed. Now it's very important after you've done an adjustment with group grade that you get out of the mode as soon as you can. And again, you do that with command G. Being in this mode for longer than you need to will cause a lot of mistakes and a lot of confusion. So make sure it's a very dangerous mode. Make sure you uh, exit out of group grading mode as soon as you can. The other really useful application for group grading within Shots View, for example, is with the strip naming. So for example, let me just quickly modify some of these names. And also I'm just gonna go ahead and deselect these clips that I had selected before. So you can see that, especially on the timeline, I'm gonna hide Shots View with Control H. This looks really messy. All of these names are incorrect. They're not quite right. There may be inconsistencies across the naming. If I wanna fix this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control H to bring up the Shots View. Hit Command A and that'll select all of my clips in my scene. Enter group grading mode. And we're gonna go ahead and select one of these clips and type in a naming expression. Baselight has some really cool expressions that it uses to replace text with a metadata field. So in this case, I'm gonna use the expression %w, which will replace the strip name with the shot file name. So I'm gonna hit enter and it will warn me that I'm going to apply a substitution. And I'm gonna go ahead and click yes and I'm gonna exit group grade mode with Command G and deselect all. So all of our clips in the scene come from the same file. So all of these names are the same, but if you were working with multiple clips, the strip name would be renamed to the clip name. So a really useful baselight expression uh, in the shots view there. So I'm gonna hide the shots view, shift middle mouse button click to jump my cursor to this point. I'm gonna hold down the command button, middle mouse button drag to the right to zoom in and dragging up to make them a little bit bigger. So as you can see, these three clips have a strip category assigned to them. Strip categories are a really useful way to categorize certain clips or types of shots within your scene. Um, it's a bit out of scope for today's insight, but what I've done in this particular scene is I've marked all of these shots with this default strip category that have had transforms applied. And I've added the transform as an additional strip, so it's really obvious uh, visually in the timeline here. But let's say that I wanted to export out an EDL back to editorial so that they can sign off that I've applied all the transforms within my base light scene that they have in their editing suite, right? So that's a fairly common request. Let's go ahead and open up Shots View with Control H. And you can see up the top left here, we've got a couple of different tabs. So we've got, um, if we go ahead here, the graded tab, you can see that there's only three shots and it has a filter. So if we have a look down the bottom here, there's a whole wide range of things that we can filter our clips by. Um, in order to refine our selection in the shots view. So in this case, in the graded tab, which is a default tab, you can see that it has a has grade filter applied. So it's only showing these shots. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new tab entirely, and we're gonna call this opticals and hit enter. You can think of opticals as clips that have had transforms applied to them. Um, you'll hear that word in the industry a little bit, opticals. It's just clips that have had a transform of some description applied. Now it's using the graded tab as a reference point here. So you can see the filter is still active. We can cancel any filter by just clicking the text here. And now you can see that we're viewing all of our shots in the shots view again. So let's go ahead and add a filter, but instead of using the graded filter, we're gonna use the strip category filter, which is down the bottom here. Now we want this tab to just show the opticals that have had transforms applied. So we're gonna go ahead to this drop down arrow and we're gonna select default strip category, which is how I categorized all opticals within the scene. I'm gonna go ahead, click this. And now you can see we've got all of the opticals within the scene in a shots view tab. Now this is really useful for a few reasons. One, we can use this for our own reference if we wanted to go back and check things, but also we can export out an EDL for the editor or a PDF for a producer. There's lots of things that we can do here. So the first thing I wanna do is again, just customize these metadata columns. So I'm gonna remove the length and the tape and the camera and the scene and the take. We might actually just re-include length 
and I can go ahead and just re-jiggle these metadata columns as I see fit. Now I'm going to go up to the cog menu and you can see I can export an EDL from here. So you can choose the EDL format, uh, give it a file path and apply everything that you need here for your EDL. But also I can go ahead and export a report. It'll say that no reports are defined. So I can go ahead and start to format that up using the reports view. I'm going to hit new. Now you can see all of my shots here. So if I want to reflect the opticals tab that we just built, I'm going to go ahead and click opticals. And now you can see we can build a really fantastic document. For now though, I'll just close the reports view. So I'm hoping that you can already start seeing the different applications that this could be used for. If you're working with visual effects shots, you could be strip categorizing all of your visual effects and then you could create a shots view list uh, with a strip category visual effects and then you can see at any time and you can navigate through at any time uh, the visual effects shots. If I was having a client review for example I could go ahead command click the first shot shift click the rest and now using the navigation controls down here I can just you know go through each of these clips especially if these were spread out throughout the entire feature film timeline for example. So as you can see there's lots of useful applications with the shots view and with filtering. I'm going to deselect these clips and go back to the all shots menu. Now the last thing that I wanted to touch on in this video is missing media. So when you've imported a sequence, especially when you're working with EDLs, there might be a few bits of missing media in your project and we really want to flag those early. So what we're going to do is in the cog menu, there's a select missing material button, which we'll click. And as you can see, it has selected the one and only missing media clip. We're going to hide the shots view with control H. So depending on what the issue is here, we could either set a editorial strip to remind us that we need to chase this up with editorial. We could also go up to the marks menu and create a mark. If I move my cursor out of the way, you can see that we now have a mark. In fact, we could even right click this mark, add a note text and go missing media. And now you can see that we have a very visual reference point in our scene. But in our case, um, I'm just gonna go ahead up to the file name I can see that it's actually just an issue with the naming here. Instead of number one, it's been changed to number two. So I can go ahead and directly edit this file path to properly reflect the file name and hit enter. And you can see that now our file has sprung back to life. So I'm gonna right click this mark and go remove mark from timeline. And I can go ahead and remove my strip category as well. Just be aware though, the select missing material button is not perfect. Um, it definitely shouldn't be relied on as a trustworthy source. It's a really useful way to get the obvious offline media uh, discovered, uh, but especially if there are respeeds or you know just a few missing frames within a clip, it won't necessarily mark these. So this is a really good starting point, but you should definitely be checking the entire scene manually just to make sure that there's nothing uh, iffy going on in your scenes. And we're gonna deselect this shot. And that's the shots view. So we covered quite a lot of material in this insight, including exporting out EDLs, PDFs, uh, selecting missing media, creating our own tabs and filtering within those tabs to get a really refined selection of shots that we can browse through. Uh, we had a look at navigation and how we can rename clips and group grade clips to change key metadata and to tidy up the project. So again, lots of things to digest. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For mixinglight.com, I'm Luke Ross.